he's like the criticism is not the problem. He's like, yo, if Joe or you, anyone else, y'all get on your platform. Yeah, I like my album, don't like it, y'all hate it. That's all good. Like if you're just talking about the music, that is all good. Right. And I think by the way, our conversation chat, I think we were pretty much talking about music, right? So, you know, I think that's why he was trying to tell us, oh, I didn't hear exactly what you said. I'm happy he said that because what it what I'm hearing now, it validates my opinion and what I said earlier. I don't think Drake was annoyed that Joe Budden said he didn't like his album. That's not what he was pissed off about. Drake was pissed off about about the little spicy little jabs he throws in there. And to be fair, there's one of the things that annoys me and why I stopped listening to Joe Budden in the first place. The first, well, one of the first reasons why I stopped listening to Joe Budden podcast was because of the fallout. When they all broke up, um, it kind of crushed me. I'm not going to lie. As illusory as that kind of sounds, I had an extreme parasocial relationship with the Joe Budden podcast. Like those guys were basically my friends, right? I used to listen to that shit all the time. When I'd go to work, I'd fucking save the podcast and listen to it on the way back to work. I'd fucking listen to it at lunch. Like I was loving that podcast. I was in love with that podcast. Loved everything about it. Um, I saw them when they came to the UK on tour, like crazy. I was a big, big, big fan of that, of that pod. And the whole premise of the podcast was that Joe Budden was this failed rapper who never made it in rap, um, was never really kind of acknowledged, never got his flowers. He then goes into a career doing podcasting with his friends. They make it and they become one of the most popular hip hop, black culture podcasts in the scene. And he basically is able to make it with his friends he's able to kind of like you know be a part of hip-hop being acknowledged as somebody prominent in the industry and do it with his friends so he's able to kind of come up started from the bottom and now i'm here with all his boys and they're all rich because they're doing this pod together it was like an amazing story right it was like the it was kind of like a podcast version of entourage but then obviously the truth of the issue is that behind the scenes they were having issues and it came to a head where unfortunately Rory and Moore had to leave um, because they had issues with Joe and the accounting and whatever and credit, who knows, but essentially you'd assume it's probably money and whatnot. And Joe's behavior the entire time with the breakup was so like surprising because he was doing all the things that you thought he wouldn't do because of the treatment he got in the music industry. He was really dismissive of his friends' contributions and what they did. He was super egomaniacal. He was narcissistic. You couldn't tell him anything. Like he was being a real cunt during that time. And I was like, you know what? I'm I'm not I'm not vibing with this. Like I never liked him alone, to be honest. I was never a fan of Joe before the pod. He was tolerable because of the pod, because of his friends. Like when you saw him around his friends, you saw, oh, this guy's actually pretty decent. He seems like a cool dude. So when the friendship thing broke down, it was like, you're just left with him. You're like, mm, I don't really like you as a person, so I'm going to tap out. So I tapped out. No problem, right? But having known Joe and listened to the podcast for a long time, I think even he would probably admit this. He's a very catty uh, kind of guy, right? He doesn't say, he doesn't, he doesn't say things nicely. He can, he, he always likes to throw a little jab here and there. Um, in general, anyway, I think I was talking to somebody, I think maybe Natashki earlier, I was saying, I've never really liked men like that anyway. I don't like, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even call it sassy. I don't, I just don't like like guys who have, who have that kind of almost feminine trait of just being bitchy. I, I've always hated it. I don't know why, but it's always kind of grated me. Guys who go out of their way to kind of be, you know, to say things, to get a reaction out of you. And then when you go and step to them, they act like they didn't say nothing. Like I hate all that shit. It's really annoying. Um, I wouldn't even call it passive aggressive. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, I dis it disgusts me. And Joe's got that in spades. So he does it a lot. He'll say something critical, constructive, but then he'll kind of lace it with a bit of jabs, with a bit of spice. It's a bit too much. So when I heard Joe Budden say what he said to Drake about the album or on, the, on the podcast, I was listening as a fan, as a, as a former fan. I could hear what Drake would probably be offended by. And what he was offended by was the little jabs of Drake essentially calling him calling him a pedo, right? In a roundabout way. Hey, why you keep fucking 25-year-olds? Fuck people your own age. He kind of age-shamed him. Yo, I had to Google your age. I have to see how old you are. Now I know how real old you are. Do you know what I mean? Like those kind of little jabs. It's just unnecessary. But that's what Drake does. Sorry, that's what Joe does. And allegedly, they're meant to be friends. Drake and Joe are kind of friends behind the scenes, allegedly. So you can imagine how Drake would feel if he sees somebody who he's meant to be cool with just throwing unnecessary jabs in there, like age shaming him, 
talking about the girls that he's fucking. It's like, bro, we were just fucking the same girls yesterday. Why are you now getting on your platform and trying to make it seem like I'm some other guy and trying to open the door to the whole Peter? Like, it gets a bit weird. So I had a feeling Drake didn't have an issue with what Joe said about the album. He probably doesn't give a fuck. But it's just more so Drake Joe having those extra spicy bars pinning at him. And then obviously him thinking, hey, hold on. You are nowhere near me on, of my level. And here you are talking about me and what I should be doing. You never were any any bit successful in anything that you did. So obviously that would be the extra spice coming from him. But I never for once thought Drake was like, oh, impervious to criticism. Because Drake has been getting ripped from the moment he came into hip hop, right? He never, he's never really had a universal love really from people online people have always been dunking on drake the light skin thing the grassy um the the how he puts his face pouts when he takes pictures his clothes the hairstyles like people dunk on drake all the time so i don't think he would have if he didn't snap before he's not gonna snap now he just doesn't give a fuck do you know what i mean and obviously you know he's successful enough to probably know that that stuff is just noise and just a bit of fun online and he also doesn't take himself too seriously it seems like so i was really surprised when everyone was like oh he's really emotional he's getting sensitive he's triggered it's like i don't think that's the case i just think he's annoyed that his friend somebody that he knows is taking personal digs at him that's basically it i think so anyway with joe though i think because it was plastered over over social media remember i was doing it live his shit was all on Instagram this and third. He said with Joe, and I think he reached out to Joe. He said, he, he pretty much gave me a gist of the convo. He's like, yo, he told Joe, like, yo, bro, you know, just don't get on your platform and talk about me like you don't respect me. You know what I mean? Like, See? don't talk about me like there isn't some respect there uh -huh. between us as men. Exactly. And he's like, yo, just don't get on there talking spicy about me as a person, right? It's like, you know. Man, this all but confirms the next podcast, the next Joe Budden podcast that everyone's looking forward to, people are looking forward to hearing Joe Budden crash out. It's not going to happen. Act just confirmed that Drake and Joe had a conversation privately since the whole dunking online. So most likely we're not going to get a crash out from Joe Budden. He's going to play it cool. He's going to be like, yeah, we spoke. He's going to do that whole fake humble, uh, reflective thing. You know, he might take a couple of jabs here and there, but he's not going to say nothing annoying man i wanted him to crash out and actually entertain us but since i spoke behind the scenes he's gonna you know he's gonna play his position and keep it moving fuck oh so if you don't like the music or, or you do like the music those are all opinions that are entitled to you but if you get up on there and i think he specifically said it was just like you start like aiming like super personal shots at me about me and my character and just how i'm living in terms of Yo, you're hanging with little niggas, and yo, you're you're running around here fucking all the twenty five year old women, and he's like, yo, he's like, yo, yo, this thing is just making this shit up, like that's not actually even reality, like you know what I mean? But that's a personal shot. He's like, of course I'm gonna take it a certain type of way. The dude is attacking me personally, based on him having a critique over the music, right? And um, you you, you, you know what? I understood that. I understood. Yeah, I get it too. That's it. I don't really go through the whole thing, but it makes complete sense. Again, I think I'm really perplexed why there's been so much conversation uh, or backlash against the album. I don't understand it, but it is quite refreshing to see on social media people talking about music. That's been nice to see. People critiquing or looking back at other previous Drake albums and saying what they liked about this, what they didn't like about that. It's been good to see because I'm so bored of the first week numbers discussion and shit and who's selling out what. It doesn't fucking matter. Like, let's talk about the quality of the tunes. Like, can you imagine hearing this in the club? Is this a good R&B record? Do you like that chorus? Was that verse good? Like, that's what I want to hear. That's what I want to see on a timeline. That's actually, in my opinion, what's going to improve the these, these artists that we all love and know if you're if you're a consumer and you're demanding or you're talking about these type of things sorry on the timeline it's probably going to make your favorite artist you know pick up a pen and write something new or put together a new track or think of a new scheme or think of a new theme or new approach to recording that's what's actually going to push them to make good work but if you're out here just talking about first week numbers and whatnot what they're going to do they're going to keep giving you first week numbers music so i actually do like the conversation i think the backlash has been a bit overcooked um because like I said, I honestly do think For All, for All The Dog is one of Drake's better albums, especially in recent years. Um, I haven't even listened to Certified Loverboy again since it dropped. I can't even name you one track on the album. I didn't like that at all. I think um, For All The Dogs is 
definitely definitely one of the far better ones and um yeah man i think it's gonna age pretty well um i think over the next couple of months while people kind of live with it and shit and you hear it out and about i think people will start to enjoy it because i think again the first half of it was really good i really enjoyed the first half i was like the first half was banging um and then now obviously afterwards it kind of fell off a cliff but it was still good it was still 15 tracks good ones from drake is a lot because you know he puts a lot of tracks on his albums and he runs through tracks and shit so i'm i'm with it 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 i'm with it, I'm with it.